So let's um, leverage this right here. I want to just talk a little bit also about kind of architecture and the way I think. And I think something that's very, very powerful about DGRAPH's architecture, for those of us who are just average developers trying to solve business problems day in and day out, we want to do that with integrity, but we also want to do that with a minimal kind of redundancy, right? So here's the cool thing. If we were building a traditional um, application today, what would we be thinking about, right? We would be thinking about that we need some sort of database, all right? And so our database, maybe it's sitting here and whatever database we've chosen, maybe we've chosen some sort of maybe SQL database, right? Like a Postgres or something, and it sits here. And then we realize that we have a team of people whose job it is, is to build a bunch of kind of front end applications, right? Whether this is kind of browser based or we're talking about applications that are mobile, right? I mean, we wanna build these front ends. And traditionally, we've stayed away from these client applications, right? Our client applications talking to the database directly for endless reasons that we, we talk about. Mainly we don't wanna maybe stick DSL type of SQL code in here. We don't want to do that. So, or we want some, maybe we want some better scalability, whatever it is. Traditionally, what we've done is we've taken our client applications, we've taken our database, and we've kind of added this layer in between, right? And what I'll do is this is our web service, right? And a majority of what our web service tends to have to do is CRUD. And this becomes I can't tell you how tedious is this? How tedious it is it to build out the CRUD layers that just give you basic access to the database? It's a lot of work. And a lot of times, we this development here can't even start until this web service work is done because we're not gonna let these client applications talk to the database directly. Most of these applications are very good talking HTTP, right? Or, and maybe some other kind of client uh, those protocols, but talking Postgres or whatever that is, it's not really in the wheelhouse. It's another reason why we do this. And so there's a large development effort that has to take place here in the middle before any of this kind of work gets to happen. And it slows everything down. I can't tell you over the last 30 years how stressful it's been to always have to be ahead of the UI team, always ahead of those front end teams, right? And so one of the cool things, I think, one of the really cool things about DGRAPH is DGRAPH has kind of flipped this model around a little bit. And you're going to see it in the code that I've just shared with you. One of the things that DGRAPH said was, you know what? Why does a database have to be in the bottom layer? Why can't the database be here? And potentially now, what we can do is build web service that need maybe custom, you know, business logic. For me, one of the cool things that I wanted to really learn how this worked with DGRAPH was moving the database from layer three to layer two. Now to do that, you need essentially a DSL, right? A domain specific language that is native with these browser and mobile apps that will let you do that. And that DSL, for me, is GraphQL. I think this is where GraphQL is going to win. Because what GraphQL is going to do is give us that DSL that is easy to work with and use in that browser and mobile environment. And let the browser and mobile environments be able to talk to the database directly. However, that's not enough because we don't want to write queries necessarily, right? Like we think about queries today in the UI, we still want an API in the database. Somebody's got to build the API. I mean, that's what we were doing here. We were building an API for the client front end to be able to talk to the database. So if I'm going to move the database here, I still need an API. Well, guess what? DGRAPH thought about that. DGRAPH said, yes, we need an API. So what we're going to do is based on the schema that is loaded in the database, we're going to create for free a GraphQL API that supports both querying and mutations. 
Essentially, our CRUD API is built for free and adjusted as the schema is adjusted. What does that mean? What that means now is once we define our data model in that GraphQL schema and we tell DGraph, here is our data model. DGraph generates the CRUD API for us and now the front end developers essentially get to go to work directly, immediately leveraging the CRUD API. And I never have to write a CRUD API again. If I need in a service to talk to the database, I can do that because I can leverage what's already been given to me. How cool is this? This is saving me not hours, not days, potentially weeks, if not maybe months of code that I don't have to write and maintain and worry about over time. This to me is one of the really huge, big wins of DGraph from an application point of view. This is why my clients are looking at DGraph more and more every day. The fact that DGraph is a scalable database that has those transactions, it's highly reliable, and they've run the database through their, through their courses, that works in a Kubernetes environment, it is distributed, it can scale. The fact that we've got all of that that's just, for me, bonus, bonus, just bonus, right? I mean, brilliant. I don't even have to think about or worry about um, scalability. One of the things I love about the cloud, one of the things I love about the cloud is that you get all of that scalability for free if you leverage that cloud technology the right way. I'm a developer who doesn't want to manage production systems themselves. I want to use them. What's also really cool here is that DGraph has a cloud environment now that they call Slash. So guess what? I don't even have to install my own DGraph Kubernetes environment. I can connect to Slash, they monitor it, they manage it, and I have scalability out of the box with the database to do all of this. Essentially, I get to solve my business problem just about day one, and any custom logic that goes beyond basic CRUD, I get to put here. Here's the cool part. Here's the cool part. Are you ready? If let's say I have some custom logic, like add a new city. Well, guess what? You might be thinking, Bill, we've got a problem now because if you're writing custom APIs, then essentially what you're saying now is that the front ends have to know, do they talk to the database or do they talk to your service? Guess what? No, this would be a nightmare. If I had to worry about the front ends talking to multiple different services for different data, no, it doesn't work. So what DGraph did, and I have all this working in the travel project, is they said, look, this same GraphQL API that we have here in the database, I'm gonna give Bill the ability to write custom GraphQL queries and eventually very soon, custom GraphQL mutations, which means this browser app, this mobile app, only ever has to talk to the database and we can configure the database to be told if this GraphQL function is executed, okay, we're not gonna handle it directly here in the database, we're gonna send it to the web service and let the web service deal with it and then it comes back through. This is brilliant, this is brilliant because now the database becomes layer two. And then we customize the database, we get CRUD for free, we build custom functions that the database responds to. Also, by the way, DGraph leveraging Node already has Lambda function support, so you don't even necessarily have to build your own web service logic. You could potentially do it if you're familiar with Node in their Lambda support. And if you're interested in doing something like federated GraphQL, like with Apollo, DGraph already has plugin support because they've been working with some clients on it. And now you can even extend your GraphQL model where DGraph is a part of that federation and the plugins are there for free. If I sound excited, I am. Because I think GraphQL as a DSL is the future, is the future for our data access. 
And I think what DGRAPH has done by moving the database in layer two is that productivity gain that we weren't getting. I was able to build that project you saw really quickly. The only thing that was slowing me down was having to learn <laughs> some of this new tech, right? Some of this new tech, that was the only thing.